Sean Strickland and Driggers Duplessis are probably two of the least technical, awkward, unorthodox fighters in the middleweight division currently. Yet somehow they've continuously found ways to win and they are main eventing the first pay-per-view of 2024 with Sean Strickland as the UFC middleweight champion. This is going to be a crazy year of MMA. Guys, welcome into the Megan Anderson Show. We're gonna be kicking off 2024 with UFC 297 in Toronto, Canada. We've got Sean Strickland defending his middleweight belt against Drickus Duplessis in the main event. So let's get into their stats. We've got Sean Strickland coming in with a 28 and five record. He stands six foot one inches tall with a 76 inch reach. He's on a three fight win streak with that crazy unanimous decision win over Israel Adesanya back in September, which won him the middleweight title. He's also coming off of a stoppage against Abus Magomedov in July and a unanimous decision win over Imavov in January, which I'm pretty sure was the first fight night of the year. And he also took that on a week's notice as well. He's finished 14 of his 28 wins, seven in the first round. However, he's only had five stoppages in his 14 UFC wins. Obviously notable wins. We've got Adesanya, Magomedov, Imavov, Jack Manson, Uriah Hall. Notable losses, Alex Pereira. <laughs> we got knocked into the third dimension. And then Jared Cannonier in December of 2022. Now, on the other hand, we've got Drikus Duplessis he still knocks 20 and two record. He stands six foot one inches tall with a 76 inch reach. He's on an eight fight win streak. He hasn't lost since 2018, which is wild. He's only six and zero in the UFC. He's finished 19 of his 20 wins, eight in the first round, 10 by submission. Obviously notable wins, Robert Whittaker, a second round stoppage in July, a second round stoppage of Derek Brunson in March and a stoppage of Darren Till in 2022. When you look at both of these guys, like I said, they are so awkward. These are two guys that you cannot train for. They don't have really have a lot of rhythm or timing. And I honestly feel like they just do things and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And both of these guys coming off of huge name wins, which I'm kind of low key salty about because it's my Anzac peoples. I was so upset when Drickus Duplessis beat Robert Whittaker. However, I will give both guys props. They fucking turned up, they were on their game and that was the best both of those guys have looked in a very long time. And with how many fights they both have under their belt, that they're still able to improve and grow and turn out better performances each time they step into the cage. It's so impressive. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Sean Strickland, his keys to victory are gonna be three things. He needs to pressure, pressure, pressure. He needs to drag it into the later rounds and he needs to listen to his coaches. Now for the pressure, watching any of Sean Strickland's bouts, he doesn't do anything flashy. He's not fancy. He's pressuring, 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 but he does that behind the jab. It sets everything up. And when you look at Drickus Duplessis, his chin does tend to be up in the air a little bit. And if you look at the Whitaker fight, Whitaker was able to capitalize on those jabs as he tried to enter the pocket. Strickland needs to also use the case to his advantage. He's got good cage control. Don't stand and trade with Duplessis at range. You need to be all the way in or all the way out. Because Drickus is so fucking awkward, <laughs> you, you cannot risk that middle ground because he seems to have this ability to hit you at the weirdest angles. It makes no sense. And it's when you look at his fight against Brunson, when you look at his fight against Darren Till, when you look at his fight against Robert Whittaker, these guys seem to be doing fine. Then all of a sudden he's clipped them with like the most 
weirdest angled hook and all of a sudden they're like wobbling all over the place so for Sean either be all the way in pressure him on the cage wear him out be in his face make Drickus Duplessis uncomfortable and fight on the back foot because he also is a pressure fighter Drickus is also a pressure fighter so he's going to have to make Drickus uncomfortable kind of like Derek Brunson did in the first round of his fight with DDP he made him uncomfortable he put him on his back he forced him to grapple he tired him out he hit him with some massive shots and Drickus didn't like that Drickus went for a shot on the fucking all-american wrestler <laughs> Derek Brunson so I think for Sean needs to be in his face make him uncomfortable dragging into the later rounds like I said whether the early storm Drickus Duplessis is incredibly dangerous he has that punching power that I think is comparable to Alex Pereira is it as technical absolutely fucking literally not but I think he does have the ability to have that one punch lights out power if Sean can weather the early storm whilst DDP is dangerous after a round round and a half if you force him to work hard enough he gasses and he slows significantly and this is a 25 minute fight he's never fought 25 minutes before and 25 minutes is a whole different animal Sean isn't a isn't a first round fighter Sean's a 501 fighter as soon as it hits five minutes and one second into that second round that's when it's his time to go because he might not be the biggest guy the amount that he walks you down forces you to adjust and people either sink or swim Drickus Duplessis hasn't fought five rounds Sean can go a hard five rounds high volume high pace drag it into the later rounds is going to be so key for Sean in this particular fight the last thing for Sean is going to be listening to his coaches you know both him and his his coach Eric Nixick have stated he doesn't listen he's like I don't really listen to my coaches very much look at the sole time that he actively was listening to his coaches he became a fucking world champion when you listen to the people that know what they're doing that can see that outside perspective anything can happen and that is why you have a coach who can see things in the third person because they're not right there in it you know they can see things that you might not be able to see and when you're coming up against a guy like Drickus Duplessis you want to get as much advantages as you can if your coach is telling you something you need to fucking listen to that now for Drickus Duplessis the keys to victory for him are going to be he needs to shut down the jab he needs to use his size and he needs to be patient. Now for shutting down the jab, as I just kind of mentioned, everything to do with Sean's pressure comes off the jab. That's how he sets everything up. You wanna shut down somebody's jab, you go to the leg. Leg kick, leg kick, leg kick. And Sean, as we've seen, is susceptible to the leg kicks with how upright he is. He has that really tall, awkward, upright stance with, with like that weird Philly shell and upper body wise it's defensively sound but his legs are open. To stop somebody from walking you down you need to make them respect the range and by doing that you either A go for a takedown or B you hit them with those big power shots that hurt them that make them think oh shit maybe let's not pressure as heavy and like I like I mentioned earlier I think I think Drickus Duplessis has comparable power to Alex Pereira and the fact that he doesn't have to load up to be able to do a significant amount of damage is crazy so I think Duplessis needs to go to the leg kicks he needs to res make Sean respect the range and the power early on and that's going to shut down the jab which shuts down the pressure. With Drickus Duplessis to use his size overwhelm Sean make Sean wear his weight hold him on the cage. Drickus likes to throw high volume which could work against Sean with the fact that like it's probably going to be a fucking train wreck as they both try to like pressure into each other so he could have success with those higher volume combinations however Drickus needs to be careful he is hittable now the last thing for Drickus is he needs to be patient he starts so fucking fast and when he does that he has a tendency to gas himself out doing too much too early this is a 25 minute fight he did get his nose fixed so he gets 30 percent extra air 30 percent extra air Drickus Duplessis looked amazing against Robert Whittaker so there is that he's a mythical creature now but he needs to manage his energy output because he gets sloppy when he doesn't when he goes too hard too early too fast too early and I think for Drickus this is going to be a really good test for him 
on do I have the patience? Have I improved on my on my energy efficiency? You know, let's be calculated a bit. I know I've got the power. I just have to be a little bit more patient and strategic with my shots instead of going balls to the fucking wall right off the bat, gassing myself out and then Sean picking it up in the later rounds once he's tired. Betting wise for these two, I think at two and a half under, I'm definitely probably going to pick Drickus Duplessis with his power. If it goes the distance, I'm probably going to go with Sean Strickland. So they're my two kind of picks for this fight. But guys, interesting one. I think it's going to be an absolute shit show leading up to the fight, the press conference. The fight itself, I think it's going to be absolutely wild with the, with the way that both of these guys fight and their approach to fighting. Let me know who you guys are going to be picking for this one and I'll see you guys in the next video.